You're listening to Beyond Technique, the podcast that empowers photographers to bring their businesses to the next level. Hello and welcome to Beyond Technique, brought to you by Platypod, PhotoFocus, and Skip Cohen University. This is Shamir Young, and I'm joined by my co-host, Skip Cohen. Skip. Hey. It's Happy a, October. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. It's a bone <laughs> chilling 77 here in Florida oh, today. Stop it. And Try it's amazing 30. how people... 39 Isn't degrees. Really? 39 All degrees right. right now in Michigan. Well, Try it's that. scary. <laughs> it, it's scary the way people start whining the minute it gets down to anything under like 75, 70. God forbid you get into the 60s <sighs> and they pull out their flannel and their Ugg boots. <laughs> uh, Softies. And, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have a great topic for today. Do I get yes. to can I talk about our guests? Please do. I'm so Please. excited. Because I've, I've never done one of these before, and I was waiting for your cue. Um, as <laughs> if. Hey, um, I mentioned a great topic today, but we've got an even better guest for the topic. Levi Sim joins us on this podcast, and we're going to talk about making the transition from being a solo contributor to full-time photographer as part of the staff for Utah State. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. Now, if I look at Levi's background, Levi and I first met at Skip Summer School, I think it was 2009, and over the years I've watched him become literally an ambassador of goodwill and support for the professional photographic community. Go to any convention over the last 10 years and you can spot Levi. He's the guy with the bow tie and the brown fedora. He's a photographer, he's a writer, he's an educator, he's a podcaster, and he spent most of his career in imaging asking other photographers and manufacturers, quote, how can I help, close quote. Everybody knows Levi. In fact, when I started working with the team at Platypod, Dr. T, the founder and owner of the company, asked me if I knew Levi. And then wander over to Photo Focus, and you'll see him writing and hosting podcasts, and wander into Luminar, and he'll probably be there too. And go to any, boy, for the longest time, just about any dinner that I was invited to attend, Levi was somewhere at the table. So he's either the greatest mooch of free food or he's just got an incredible network of friends and it's the network of friends, everybody. So, hey buddy, if I haven't screwed up something in technology here and Shamir can't bail me out, this is the cue for your lips to move. Welcome to Beyond Technique. Well, thanks, I'm <laughs> really pleased to be here. By the way, it's nine degrees. What? Right okay, just verify oh, something. Just now goodness. when you said, well, thanks, did your voice crack? Maybe. Did I hear, <laughs> are we going back through puberty now? What it's was that? Sharp. <laughs> hey, seriously, it is so, it's so oh. good to catch up to you because we're all used to catching up at conferences, but they're a little bit uh, lean these days. So it really is fun catching up, catching up to you and having you on this podcast. Absolutely. I, I needed a little dose of... Skip and Shamira, it's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. Oh, I can tell this is going to be a fun one. And Levi, I am so pumped to hear the sound of your voice and, and to have you on the show because it has been years, years, at least since you and I have talked directly um, outside of text anyway, in email, etc. And so we really appreciate having you on the show. And obviously, Skip and I have been friends with you for years. Um, but there may be some in the listening audience who do not know your background. So could you briefly share your background with us and how you ended up doing what you're doing today? Oh, absolutely. Um, I've been a, a full-time photographer for 10 years next month. And uh, I, bought, I bought my first camera in 2009, my first digital camera, which was 12 years after the last time I, I made any pictures in high school. And... Uh, I loved it in high school, but my brother came home from college and his his roommate was a, a photo major. And he goes, man, there are no jobs in photography. And so I studied geology and Chinese in college. And uh, 12 years later, the same brother goes, hey, I bet you could make some money making pictures. <laughs> and so I bought a camera and quit my job a year and a half later and here I am 10 years later, still going strong. And, and really, I got, a, like Skip already mentioned, I, I met Skip at, at Skip's summer school. You know, I was going pro before summer school. 
no, Going Pro was after. Okay. Because then, I yeah. met Scott, I well, I had met Scott Bourne years earlier, but in 2009, that was the first time that we had actually right. worked on something together. So Going Pro came after that. That's right. So that's that, and this this is largely where I got started. I I listened to the Photo Focus podcast with Scott and Skip while I walked to my studio every day, and uh, well, every every week at least, <laughs> and took their their business plans to heart. And every time I have done the things that Skip taught me, I have made a living. Like everything well, that Skip has said. Uh has has made me able to provide for my family and i i appreciate that and i i'd recommend to anybody listening to go get that book going pro that you and scott did with a, with a whole bunch of contributors and and also just to go back through these podcasts and employ one thing every week and make yourself into a full-time photographer well, I appreciate credit for all that, but the reality is that so many of the things I share, um, especially back in those days, were all thanks to things that, that I was learning from Scott or Scott and I were learning together. So it's, I mean, not this isn't about Scott Bourne on this podcast, but Scott had the, I believe, 104th or 106th website in the world. 106th, yeah. 106th, okay. And that was all at a time when the rest of us were saying, eh, I don't know, this internet thing, it's it's going to be like hula hoops. I don't know if it's really going to catch on and go crazy. Um, so there were so many things in those early podcasts. I mean, Scott and I, we did 75 of them, and we would just, we would just rant. We'd just start talking. We'd pick a topic. And we'd both throw in everything that we'd experienced around that topic. So, you know, while you're giving me credit, uh, the credit really goes to, it goes to Scott and it goes to thousands of photographers that have shared stuff with all of us that's going on. But I'm curious because you, you're, you're leading in perfectly to where I, where I was hoping to try and go next on this, on this conversation. If you look at a lot of those things, regardless of, where you learn them, what are some of those, what are some of the important lessons that you learned back then that have carried over? Cause now going, being, being the lead photographer for Utah state is a very different job than almost, uh, you know, freelance and so many other things that you've done, um, as an entrepreneur over the years. Absolutely. Um, I think I think there's three things that that have always worked well for me. The first thing is your pictures don't actually matter that much. <laughs> at a you know at a, at a certain point everybody makes a decent picture, and you should you should absolutely strive to to do your best and learn everything, but your pictures don't matter nearly as much as your relationships. That is the reason people hire you again. And getting hired again is the way to make a living. Anybody can get hired once, but it takes um, it, it takes a reason to get hired again. Is that a good way to say it? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I mean I've I've been quoted as saying any moron can get their first customer. Absolutely. It's it's keeping that customer and getting that customer to relate to other friends to to insist they come back to you for their portraits or family sitting or whatever it is. That's right. And um, another thing that that would that that I've I've learned a lot is is Skip saying or Scott's saying of own your zip code. Every time I have literally gone and knocked on doors, gone around to to the businesses in my neighborhood, in my you know in my general area, and knocked on the door and said, "Hi, I'm your your neighborhood photographer, and I'm just out getting to know my neighbors today. Here's my card." Let me know if I can help with anything. Every time I've done that, I've gotten a new client within a couple of weeks from from somebody, you know, somebody calls, and um, it takes some guts to go do that, but not that many. It's like, and once you get going, it's easy. You just have to get the gumption up to go do it that day. Take a flyer, take a 
take a business card and say, since I'm new in the neighborhood, I'm, I'm offering 20% off my services right now. And, and I uh, just wanted to get out and see what other businesses are going on so I can, you know, network with my neighbors. And every time I've done that, it's, it's been lucrative. Um, and then the last thing I'd say is that being a full-time photographer is, is about work. <laughs> it is, it is so much work. And, and so little of it is taking pictures. Way less than 20% of being a full-time photographer is making photographs. The rest is making relationships and sending invoices, which is, for some reason, the hardest thing for me to do. <laughs> so I think, I think those are three big lessons that I've learned, is that you, you've just got to get out and do things with people. And whether, I don't think it matters what business you're in, whether it's retail photography for families or if it's commercial photography for businesses um, or even fine art. Like if you're trying to sell landscapes, it is still more about your relationships and your stories than it is about your photographs. You know, Levi, what I love about this is you are talking about those skills that so many new photographers, myself included, when I started years ago, we don't think about. We, or just not trying to pick on anyone, so I'll use myself as an example. When I got started, I thought it would be all unicorns and rainbows taking pictures, you know, 95% of the time. But I love that you highlighted that with you, it's like 20%. And that's funny because that's the percentage I use when I talk to other photographers now. I say it's about 20% taking photos and 80% that other business stuff. You know, right. relationship building, which is fun. Invoicing, which is not so fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and so I love that you're hitting on these topics. And, and I'm, I'm really curious. I kind of, I have a twofer for you yeah. question. Uh, with what you're doing now in the university setting, what does your typical day look like? That's part one. And part two, I'm curious, uh, what work are you doing with the Platypod, uh, the Ultra Twin Pack? How does that incorporate into your typical day? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, so, so a typical day, and, and I've only been at Utah State since June. And so at USU, we are switching to a new photo hosting website we're switching to a photo shelter site and so right now a large part of my day is migrating uh, usable photographs onto photo shelter which isn't isn't my favorite thing to do it's it's like organizing <laughs> somebody else's old pictures and tagging them and keywording them and building an organization for all the departments on campus to come and get photographs from and uh, it, it's going to be really useful. And I, I, like, I enjoy the result, but I don't enjoy the, the tedium of getting there. So I'm, I'm trying to enjoy that. Um, so I'm doing that. I'm doing, you know, I've got to, got to check emails. And then we have a project management software. And I have to go in there and check on what marketing projects are going on that need my input. Uh, maybe there's maybe there's a fresh thing happening, and so we're going to go do a shoot with photos and videos, and then the designers will take my photos and create all these flyers and posters and TV display things and and yard signs and billboards, and so like a single shoot that I do on one day could be used for the next year and a half or two years for thousands of products that that we put out. Um, on the on the internet and across the the state as well um and and so i usually work with a video team on all my big shoots and uh and so i, I go into the project management and see what's coming up and s get ready for something that's going to happen tomorrow or or this afternoon um yesterday i got to work and found out that the time lapse modules that i ordered from australia are sitting in customs so I've got to figure out how to get them out of customs. Oh. And then I'm going down to Moab tonight to install these while we build a new campus in Moab, Utah. And we're going to do a time lapse for the next year. So I'm learning how to do long-term time lapses. <laughs> Something I've, I've never done, you know, 
I, I did a seven hour time lapse one time overnight and that's the that's the longest I've ever done. So this is gonna be a, a whole new adventure. Um, and then and then I set up like a, every month I do uh, headshots for anybody on campus who wants to sign up and, and come do those. And, uh, and then there's urgent things, like there's something in the news that needs to be covered and we provide photographs for a news outlet to, to come use. Um, so probably I'm still about 20% or less shooting and everything else getting ready to shoot um, but I get to do, I get to focus more on shooting, I guess. Like I get to spend a lot more time preparing to shoot than I used to. And I definitely produce more pictures now than I used to, because I don't have to go, I don't have to go find clients. Right. <laughs> My clients are, are knocking on the door every day trying to get something. And I have to decide who I'm allowed to help because it's a, government bureaucracy and I was like is that college actually my client or is that department supposed to go through some other channel to get to me so there's a lot of things to learn and navigate but um largely it's it's much more production of imagery which i really enjoy that's fantastic that's fantastic then, good stuff and then regarding um platypods Ah, jeez, I've so I'm Platypod's biggest fan, <laughs> and, um, and I've I've helped Larry to develop some of the features on there too, and I use them so frequently. In fact, the the slots on the on the Platypods are are, are actually called the Sim slots. <laughs> <laughs> used to to tie it to trees and railings and things, and and I I don't whenever I hike a lot. I hike several times each week, and and I carry a platypod, not a tripod. And just the other day, we used, I, I used a platypod to hold my lights up when we were, I, I put a light inside of a camping tent for a shoot we were doing for campus. And uh, so I use it, I use it for lights, I use it for cameras, and I love having two. And so I think that the, uh, the twin pack that just came out is, is a great deal because I always carry two and I carry one for my um, one for my camera with a ball head, and I carry one with the spigot adapter. I, I don't know why why Larry calls it a spigot adapter. It's a light stud. It's the five eighths inch stud with a three eighths uh, or is it a quarter inch hole on top? Anyway, you can you can set a studio flash on there or a or a speed light, and then you can tie it to a tree and put it as a rim light. You can. Um, you can set it on the ground, you can set it on a picnic table, you can tie it to railings and, and get a light into places that, uh, even things like a, like I, I used to carry the Manfrotto, um, the Justin clamp that, that Joe McNally developed, but I find that the, the platypod is actually a little more useful overall because I can tie it to anything. And I can set it on stuff, and it stands up much easier. And it'll support a monoblock, uh, a, a large studio size flash, instead of only speed light size stuff. So um, I use my second for lights all the time, and I use my first for the camera very frequently. So I, I and and it's I think it's twenty bucks cheaper than buying two individual Platypod Ultras. So there's value there. The uh, and to me the only difference, like the only thing you're not getting, you're, you're basically getting free accessories when you buy the the twin pack, the the cost of the spigot adapters and and the accessories that come in it are thrown in free and those are accessories that I use almost every time I use those so I um, I think it's a great value. You don't get the fancy platypod box that it comes in, <laughs> and you don't get the <laughs> The velour pouch. <laughs> but, well, honestly, I don't. I don't use those. Right. It's actually, so, it's actually a bigger for... savings. It, it's eighty nine dollars <laughs> for the twin pack, and ultras are fifty nine dollars. Right. Piece. But but the whole background and how we wound up launching that um, was because there was a corporate client 
that came in through one of our dealers and bought 75 of them. And this was at the same time, um, everybody was hunkering down and more things were happening with online education and applications. And that's where the idea came out of, wow, you know, so many applications right now need to. In fact, you did an article recently on, on photofocus.com and you've got a shot there in the classroom, which is where it's, it's probably going to get used. I think most often it's going to be a combination of classrooms and boardrooms where you've got, you might have two different cameras giving you two different um, angles of coverage, or you might have, you know, one's a camera and one's, one's one of your lighting accessories. So, I mean, that's how it all got, got started. And it, and it ties back into the fact that so many of us now are having to do things online, uh, especially, I mean, I've got a meeting in just a little while that's, it's a Zoom meeting. It's a board for a nonprofit here in Sarasota. Normally we would get together and meet in a conference room. It doesn't happen anymore. So everybody's got to have different coverage. And because it's a board meeting and we need to be able to see each other, um, it, we're, we're lighting things differently and the setup is different. So I didn't mean to go into a soapbox presentation about, about Platypod, but and, it's and just a remarkable little product. You didn't ask me on here because to talk about Platypod, but I, I can't help talking about it. I, I think it's such a great tool for photographers. And, and the, like, if you happen to also work at some kind of institution that needs the two perspective, it's a great tool for that. But it's a great value. If you don't own one yet, as a photographer, get the twin pack. You'll use two. <laughs> yeah. Hey, switch, switch gears back to something that you, you said a minute ago. Let's go into kind of the topic of relationship building, because I remember a story that you told years ago um, about when you first got started and you had a competitor in town who wouldn't even talk to you. <laughs> and if I remember right, you wound up, um, did you wind up taking over or inheriting? I don't want to say take over. But the relationship got to be so good that you guys wound up working together and eventually, um, when I, I don't remember if he retired yeah. or passed away. Yeah, but, I'll, I'll help you but finish that's that. The found, but the, that's the foundation of the importance of relationship building. And you broke through the ice on with, with him. So... Talk, let's let's go in. I mean, hit that story if you want to just clarify it better, because I've I've totally butchered it. Yeah, I mean, in in 2009, it was a lot like it is now. Well, it was it was even worse because there were just suddenly pop up photographers everywhere, and you you know the story. You at, at that time it was buy a camera, start a blog, make a living. <laughs> now it's buy a camera, um, use your first and middle name for your Facebook page, make a living. <laughs> And so, you know, the, the established guy in town who'd, who'd been the, the PP of A photographer for the last 30 years, I don't know how long he'd been doing it. He'd been the, the president of, of the state PPA and everything. And he was a, you know, he's a master photographer, uh, like a certified master photographer. And here's this, this upstart guy, you know, who, who can, you know, as, as, Bambi Cantrell says, couldn't tell a F stop from a bus stop and <laughs> trying, to, trying to be in, in the community. And, um, and he, he wasn't, I wouldn't say he was snooty or anything, but he, he was a little dismissive. I'm, I'm sure he'd seen thousands of us come and go and, and knew that, you know, felt that I, I wasn't lasting, that I, I wasn't going to be around like everybody else he'd seen come and go and so he, he just wasn't interested in investing in a relationship with me but but I persisted I didn't I what I didn't do was I, I didn't take it as an offense I didn't take offense like a person has to take offense and you would have so many better relationships if you didn't take offense even if someone is trying to offend you if you don't take offense then nothing bad has happened so don't take offense at stuff and I, I just continued to to swing by and drop by and talk to him and you know ask him a question um, 
became acquaintances and then became friends. We taught workshops together. I ended up opening my studio literally in his backyard. <laughs> he had a he had a studio on Main Street right next to the the city opera house and it's a a world renowned opera house where people come from all over the world every summer to come and attend this series of of operas. And right behind that the city owns this this Victorian mansion and uh I ended up getting that mansion to use as my studio and art space for lots of other things and, and a gallery. And it was literally 20 yards behind his back door. <laughs> and we remained friends until he retired. And then, and I moved on to a, to a different place in Oregon. And that, and that was in Utah at the time. Uh, See, and that, that foundation and what you did there to me, I mean, the academic community, and we started to talk just a little bit before we started the podcast, that academic community is a very closed community. It's got a different, <laughs> and I don't want to make it sound like it's so different from the corporate world or the business world, but it is about working with professors and tenures, and you've got a whole group of people that you're supporting now that are themselves leaders within their department who don't like taking direction and yet you're in a role where you've got to get them for a it could be a headshot it could be something about their department um, you mentioned it before about about assignments and things that come your way and you've got to verify all right is this part of this project should they've come to me first should have gone elsewhere when that with that relationship building just a couple quick things because we're almost out of time. Um, what are some of the things that have been really helpful in terms of breaking through into that into that closed community and becoming such a great part of it? Um, it's it's like you mentioned before the the helpfulness. It's it's all about helping you. Like everybody who comes to a director or even a professor, they're after something. You know, can you help me with my homework? Can you? get me money to do this? Can I have money for that? And so when I show up and say, can I have access for this? Can you give me this? Can you help me get on the roof to photograph the comet with the telescope in the picture? Um, which, which is something I did earlier this summer when that Neowise comet was flying by. Uh, I had to convince the, the physics department to, to take me up on the roof at nighttime after hours during a quarantine and, uh, and make some pictures. And so finding a way to be helpful. And I'm not, uh, the way I work, and and I think it is the key to getting all kinds of access that I, that I get and, and all kinds of good relationships, is that I think what's good for you is good for you. Not what's good for you is good for me. Not you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. I'll just scratch your back. I don't, I don't need anything in return. It's not, it's not going to cost me anything significant to do something good for you. So let's just do something good for you. Maybe I'll get something good out of it eventually myself. Maybe I won't, but let's just do something good for you right now. And when people feel that, when they see that, it, it opens all kinds of access and, and it opens all kinds of recommendations as well. When I was in Oregon and I would go to the Chamber of Commerce meetings every week, we had a, a Friday morning meeting every week, and it was just kind of a, a uh, networking time, and we'd get together and, and talk, we'd get together at somebody's business and have a, a good time just chatting and things. And after about six months, people were introducing me as one of the best photographers they'd ever known, and they'd never seen my pictures but they'd seen me help putting away the chairs and they'd seen me help uh, introduce somebody else to somebody and things. And it like photography just has so little to do with your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's, that's, that is, that is so on point. That is so on point, Levi. Oh my goodness. And I can't believe how quickly this interview is flying by. And I want to make sure and get our favorite final question in, although you've already given tons of amazing advice for our listeners. But we do like to ask 
especially given the, uh, let's say, unique times right now that we're all in, what advice do you have for photographers who are just starting out? Um, I would say they can't make enough pictures. I'd say they're probably making too few pictures. And they aren't diversifying enough. I, th I think they need to do more different things. Um, Skip is always saying to, to specialize and don't have your, your VW bug website share a page with your heart surgeon website. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you should have a VW website and a heart surgeon website. I think, I think you should be able to, to photograph candid pictures and I think you should be able to um, use flashes to light a can of peanut butter and make it look good. Uh, I, I think you, you can't afford to be a, a, a wedding photographer. I think you need to be a photographer and it'll open more opportunities for you if you can just make a picture in any situation. That's amazing advice. Good advice. Yeah. Great advice. Oh, that's so cool. And, and I don't want to forget to ask, Levi, where can folks check you out online? Oh, Instagram's a pretty good spot. Go check out Photo Levi. And then if, if you go to usu.edu, you'll, you'll definitely see something I've photographed. <laughs> and, uh, and it's popping up all the time. Or, but yeah, in, Instagram, I, I place a lot of new things. Also, photofocus.com, I, I publish articles weekly there. I, I publish a portrait tips article. I think I've gone on four years of, of weekly portrait tips um, and at a, at a conference near you. Fantastic. And we will make sure to include those in the show notes as well so that people can check you out. And Skip, I don't want to forget to ask, where can folks find you? It's always the same answer. Everything I write is at skipcohenuniversity.com and it's Skip Cohen on Facebook and Skip Cohen on Twitter. And we always want to ask everybody for um, suggestions and feedback on this podcast so we can keep making them better. So my email is skip at mei500.com. And Shamira, where are they going to find you? Folks can send me an email at shamira at photofocus.com. That's my first name, C-H-A-M-I-R-A at photofocus.com. And yes, we love getting questions, ideas, feedback, because that shapes how we move forward with this show and the amazing guests that we have on this show. And speaking of amazing, Levi, thank you. This was this was awesome. Great stuff, buddy. Great advice. Yeah. Fun catching Thanks, up guys. to you. I appreciate it. And I, I appreciate you guys making the effort to make this show and uh, and everything else at Skip Cohen University and Photo Focus are are have really made my career possible. So I appreciate it. Well, thanks goes both ways because you've made a great contribution to the industry and support. So it's kind of fun. Yes, it is. and we also want to thank our listeners for joining us today. Please tell your friends about this podcast, especially if they have the desire to improve their photography business. We look forward to having you with us next time on Beyond Technique, brought to you by Platypod, Photo Focus, and Skip Cohen University.